Hi, welcome to SN Bose Physics Learning Center. I am Subramanya Hegde. In this video, we shall discuss about how to find time evolution of a quantum mechanical state. Suppose we are given a quantum mechanical state at t equal to 0 and if we wish to find quantum mechanical state at t greater than 0, the first thing that we need is energy eigenstates and energy eigenvalues of the system. That means we should solve this equation h cap psi n is equal to e n into psi n Hamiltonian eigenvalue equation or energy eigenvalue equation. If we solve this equation, we get energy eigenstates. Usually these eigenstates are orthogonal to each other. That means inner product between any two of them vanishes and we can normalize these eigenstates and if we normalize them, uh, they will follow this relation. We call this as orthonormality relation. When we solve this eigenvalue equation, energy eigenvalue equation, we will get energy eigenvalues also which are scalars. Next step is to write state at t equal to 0 in terms of linear combination of energy eigenstates. This process is allowed by the completeness condition of energy eigenstates. Energy eigenstates are always complete. They span the space. I made a separate video on this one. You can find that link in the description. Now this process of writing initial state in terms of energy eigenstate is equivalent to writing a general vector in terms of i cap, j cap, k cap. You can find lots of similarity here. Here i cap, j cap, k cap are unit vectors. They have unit length that means they are normalized similar to that one. Psi n are normalized here. Here i cap, j cap, k cap they are orthogonal to each other. In a similar way, psi n are orthogonal to each other. Ax, Ay, Az are very similar to the Cn or C1, C2, C3 and so on. And vector A is similar to psi at t equal to 0. You can find lot of uh, analogy between these two. Now once we expand initial state in terms of energy eigenstate, next step is we need to find Cn, the coefficients. To find this coefficient, you have to take inner product between psi n and state at t equal to 0. This process is similar to finding ax component of a vector by taking dot product with the respective basis or respective unit vector. Now state at time greater than 0 can be obtained just by plugging in respective exponential time dependent factor e power minus i e n t by h bar. So I mean each of these psi n in the summation should be multiplied with the respective e power minus i e n t by h bar. That is the time evolved state. Now state at t greater than 0 can also be obtained by operating this operator on state at t equal to 0. But in many cases this operator is quite difficult to find. Now let us apply this concept. Let me take CSI net June 2018 question. Pause the video and read the question carefully. At time t equal to 0, wave function of an otherwise free particle confined between two infinite walls at x equal to 0 and x equal to L is psi at x comma t equal to 0 is equal to root of 2 by L sin pi x by L minus sin 3 pi x by L. In this case, initial state is given and they are asking what is the wave function at later time t equal to m L square by 4 pi h bar. The first thing that we need to do is we need to collect energy eigenstates and energy eigenvalues. I have given energy eigenstates here. This is a particle in a box which is confined between x equal to 0 to x equal to L. That's why energy eigenstates are root of 2 by L sin n pi x by L and energy eigenvalues are n square pi square h bar square by 2 m L square where n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now let me write this state state at t equal to 0. I have taken the root of 2 by L inside. So state at t equal to 0 is already written in terms of energy eigenstates. Now let me write in a symbolic manner psi 1 minus psi 3 that is the given state. Now state at t greater than 0 state at later time is just by plugging in respective time dependent exponential factors. That means e power minus i e1 t by h bar is multiplied with psi 1 e power minus i e3 t by h bar is multiplied with psi 3 and you got the time evolution of a state where e1 and e3 are given by these equations. 
Now, this is the state at later time. Now, they are asking what is the state at later time t equal to m l square by 4 phi h bar. When we substitute e1, e3 and t equal to m l square by 4 phi h bar, we will end up with this equation. Don't solve the question completely without seeing the option. This is the state that we got here. When we see the option, you can see in option 3 and 4, e power minus i pi by 8 is outside the bracket. That's why let me take e power minus i pi by 8 outside and I will end up with this state. So that is psi 1 minus psi 3 e power minus i pi whole multiplied with e power minus i pi by 8. That means e power minus i pi is equal to minus 1. You know that one. So that's why it will become psi 1 plus psi 3 into e power minus i pi by 8. That means option 4 is the right option. Let me take another question. This is CSR net December 2017 question. Pause the video and read the question carefully. The state vector of a one dimension simple harmonic oscillator of angular frequency omega at time t equal to 0 is e1 by ket psi 0 is equal to 1 by root 2 ket 0 plus ket 2. Where ket 0 and ket 2 are normalized ground state and second excited state respectively. The minimum time t after which the state psi at t is orthogonal to initial state psi at t equal to 0 is what? Again, this problem is also related to time evolution. The first thing is we need to collect energy eigenstates and energy eigenvalues. In this case, we just need orthonormality property of energy eigenstate. Let us take ket n are energy eigenstates and we have normalized them. They are orthogonal to each other. So, they follow orthonormality relation. We don't need to write the state in terms of functions, we just need their orthonormality property to solve the question. And we need energy eigenvalues, En is equal to En plus of h bar omega, that is an energy eigenvalue of one dimensional simple harmonic oscillator, where En starts from 0 in this case, En is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Initial state is already written in terms of energy eigenstate. State at later time t can be written by multiplying e power minus i e naught t by h bar with ket 0. Similarly, multiplying e power minus i e to t by h bar with state 2. Now, if we substitute e naught and e 2, then we will end up with this state. Now, look at the question. The minimum time t after which the state vector psi of t is orthogonal to psi of 0. Let me take this minimum time as t naught. After some time t naught, psi of t naught is orthogonal to psi of 0. That means inner product between them vanishes. Psi of t naught, psi of 0, inner product between them vanishes. Now let me write inner product like this. I have taken bra vector corresponds to this one. So that's why e power minus i theta became e power plus i theta here. So and inner product I have written like this. This is state at t naught, this is state at 0. That's equal to 0. Now, let me individually take the inner product. Now, cat 0 with cat 0, that is here. Cat 0 with cat 2, that is here. Cat 2 with cat 0, that is here. Cat 2 with cat 2, that is here. Because of orthogonality property, these two inner product vanishes. Because, of, because we have taken normalized eigenstates, this is equal to 1. This is equal to 1. So, when we solve this equation, we will end up with this one and when we rearrange, we will get e power i phi omega t naught by 2 is equal to e power minus i omega t naught by 2 and again by taking this e power i omega t naught by 2 to the left hand side, we will get e power i 2 omega t naught is equal to 1. Now, we are trying to find minimum time for which this condition happens, that's why 2 omega t naught is equal to phi is equal to pi by 2 omega. That means option 1 is the right option. Now let us solve one problem related to spin angular momentum. That means time evolution problem related to spin in case of spin half system. For that we should remember eigenvalues and eigenvectors of Sx, Sy, Sz that means component of spin in case of spin half system. Now Sx matrix is given by h bar by 2 0 1 1 0 eigenvalues of sx matrix are plus h bar by 2 and minus h bar by 2 corresponds to plus h bar by 2 its eigenvector is 
1 by root 2 1 1 I have written this one as spin up x that means spin up x is the eigenstate of sx matrix with, with eigenvalue h bar by 2 and again that's equal to 1 by root 2 1 1 where 1 by root 2 is a normalization factor another eigenvalue of sx matrix is minus h bar by 2 corresponding eigenvector let me write this one as spin down along x axis that's equal to 1 by root 2 1 minus 1 again 1 by root 2 is a normalization factor now similar to this one sy matrix is equal to h bar by 2 0 minus i i 0 eigenvalues of sy matrix are also plus h bar by 2 and minus h bar by 2 corresponds to plus h bar by 2 the eigenstate is spin up along y that is the symbol that I have taken that is equal to 1 by root 2 1 i corresponds to minus h bar by 2 normalized eigenstate is spin down y that is equal to 1 by root 2 1 minus i. So similar to these two sz matrix that is equal to h bar by 2 1 0 0 minus 1 it is a diagonal matrix again its eigenvalues are also plus h bar by 2 and minus h bar by 2 corresponds to plus h bar by 2 eigenvector I have taken symbol spin up along z axis that is equal to 1 0 corresponds to minus h bar by 2 eigenvector spin down along z equal to 0 1. You have to remember all of these to solve any problem related to spin half system. Now let us take one question CSIR net December 2019 question. Hamiltonian of a spin half particle precessing in the presence of magnetic field B along the positive x direction is H is equal to minus mu B B S X where mu B is a Bohr magneton at time t equal to 0 the particle is in the eigenstate of Sz with eigenvalue H bar by 2 that means at time t equal to 0 state is spin up along z axis this is eigenstate of Sz with eigenvalue plus h bar by 2 I have just given that one. Now he is asking what is the earliest time when it will be the eigenstate of Sy with eigenvalue plus h bar by 2. To do this one you need to find again time evolution state at t equal to 0 is given state at t greater than 0 should be found here. Before proceeding we shall collect energy eigenvalues and energy eigenvectors. Hamiltonian in this case is minus mu b into b multiplied with sx matrix. Now we already know sx matrix eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now Hamiltonian eigenvalues are sx matrix eigenvalue multiplied with minus mu b into b. That means one of the eigenvalue of sx matrix is plus h bar by 2 that is multiplied with minus mu bb that is one of the eigenvalue. The corresponding energy eigenstate is nothing but eigenstate of sx matrix with eigenvalue plus h bar by 2. Here you need to remember one property whenever a matrix is multiplied with a scalar whenever a matrix multiplied with a scalar eigenvalues will be multiplied with a respective scalar but eigenvectors remain the same normalized eigenvectors will not change if you multiply a matrix with a scalar. So that's why eigenvalue is equal to minus mu b into b plus h bar by 2 and eigenvector is equal to eigenvector vector of sx matrix with eigenvalue plus h bar by 2 that is spin up x 1 by root 2 1 1. Similar to that one there is another eigenvalue of sx matrix that is minus h bar by 2 and corresponding energy eigenvalue or corresponding eigenvalue of Hamiltonian that is equal to minus mu b b multiplied with minus h bar by 2 and corresponding energy eigenstate is eigenstate of sx matrix with eigenvalue minus h bar by 2 that is spin down x 1 by root 2 1 minus 1. The property again whenever a matrix is multiplied with a scalar eigenvalues are multiplied with a scalar but normalized eigenstates remains the same. Now the next step is to write at state at t equal to 0 in terms of energy eigenstate. They have already given state at t equal to 0 is equal to spin up z that is 1 0. Now we have to write this state in terms of linear combination of energy eigenstate. I have written like c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2. c1 and c2 are the coefficients. Now this is very similar to writing a two dimensional vector in terms of i cap and j cap. psi1 and psi2 are similar to i cap and j cap here psi1 and psi2 are orthogonal to each other we can check and c1 and c2 play the role of ax and ay to find c1 we have to take inner product of psi1 with psi at 0 this is similar to finding ax by taking inner product between i cap and vector a 
here state at 0 is similar to vector a. Now similarly you can find c2 coefficient c2 by taking inner product between psi2 and state at t equal to 0. This is similar to finding ay by taking dot product between j cap with the a vector. We already have what is psi1, what is psi2 and what is psi at t equal to 0. We can find this inner product. When we find this inner product c1 is equal to 1 by root 2, c2 also equal to 1 by root 2. Now let me substitute this one for state at t equal to 0 and that is equal to state at t equal to 0 1 by root 2 psi 1 plus 1 by root 2 psi 2. Remember psi 1 is the eigenstate corresponds to energy eigenvalue E1, psi 2 is the eigenstate corresponds to energy eigenvalue E2. <coughs> now state at later time is just by plugging in this exponential time dependent factor that means e power minus i e1 t by h bar multiplied with psi1 e power minus i e2 t by h bar is multiplied with psi2 e1 and e2 are given here when you substitute this e1 and e2 we will end up with this state now let me substitute psi1 and psi2 psi1 is spin up x psi2 is spin down x we already know these are the eigenstate of sx matrix we shall substitute them and we shall rewrite them in terms of a column vector and we will end up with this one. Our state at later time is equal to column vector cos mu b b t by 2 i sin mu b b t by 2. Now read the question carefully. He is asking after some time this state is equal to eigenstate of s y with eigenvalue plus h bar by 2. Let me take that time as t naught after some time t naught the state is equal to eigenstate of s y with eigenvalue plus h bar by 2. So this is the eigenstate of s y with eigenvalue plus h bar by 2 and we need to find that minimum time. Now let us equate these two column vectors and when we equate that one cos theta is equal to 1 by root 2 sin theta is equal to 1 by root 2. The minimum value of theta for which these two condition happens these two condition happens that theta should be equal to pi by 4 that means t naught is equal to pi by 2 mu b into b that means option 1 is the right option. We can find lots of similar questions on time evolution of a quantum mechanical state in previous year question papers and I have given many of those questions in the description try to solve those questions independently by applying this concept. If you learn one concept, you can solve many problems related to that one. And our slogan is learn concept properly and solve problem independently. If you wish to understand more concept and if you wish to solve more challenging question, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on bell icon. Thanks for watching this video.